Hi, this is Mike Wagner, and in this video we'll be going over focused lower extremity DVT assessment using point of care ultrasound at the bedside. So starting off with a case, a 24-year-old female presents with unilateral pain behind the knee for two days. Her past medical history is unremarkable. She's only taking oral contraceptive pills. Uh, she has a family history of VTE, and she herself smokes and recently completed a cross-country drive one week ago. So on vital signs, her, they're normal, her exam's unremarkable, except she does have pain with palpation right over the popliteal region. So the question in your mind is, does this patient have a DVT, and can point-of-care ultrasound help answer this question? So when doing the DVT exam with uh, ultrasound, it's really critical to have a good understanding of the anatomy, um, knowing what to expect when you're looking for it. And going over the venous anatomy, um, you start off with the uh, iliac vein in the pelvis, and then it leaves the pelvis underneath the inguinal ligament, um, and then becomes the common femoral vein. And you can recognize the common femoral vein and artery because they course right over top of the femoral head, very high up in the leg. Uh, the common femoral vein will then bifurcate into the deep femoral vein uh, and dive down towards the femur, as well as the superficial femoral vein here, which courses along the medial aspect of the thigh uh, and ultimately becomes the popliteal vein. The superficial femoral vein is a misnomer, of course, because it is a deep femoral or it is a deep vein. Um, the popliteal vein, once it leaves the popliteal space, it trifurcates uh, into the anterior tib, the um, perineal vein, and the posterior tib. Um, those are the deep veins that you need to know. You also need to be familiar with um, the saphenous vein, uh, and this is the back door, if you will, of the superficial venous system into the deep venous system. This is how uh, superficial clots can actually propagate very, very proximally uh, and actually join into the common femoral vein where they can have a high risk of embolization. So those are important to identify. The arterial anatomy uh, is essentially the same as the venous anatomy or the deep venous anatomy, um, the exception being the um, common femoral artery bifurcates uh, a little bit more proximally to the um, uh, vein bifurcation. So the artery bifurcates and then the vein bifurcates. Be aware there's lots of normal variations in venous anatomy, particularly when you get down to the popliteal region. As you can see here, lots of variation. Um, if multiple deep veins exist, just ensure that they both compress. Uh, and you'll be able to tell that they're both deep veins because they'll still be paired with arteries. It's important not to confuse superficial veins with deep veins, as the superficial veins won't have arteries going along with them. But Note that when the superficial veins, if they join into a deep vein, make sure that those superficial veins also um, compress right at the junction of where a deep vein is. And a great example would be the saphenous. So a couple of uh, um, principles to keep in mind. Uh, complete compression of the deep vein with gentle pressure is adequate to exclude DVT. And so what we mean by that is, is just to answer the question of whether or not a DVT is present or not, uh, all we need to do is compress the vein. We don't need to use color flow or Doppler waveform techniques um, just to answer that simple question. Those techniques are, however, beneficial when you're answering more advanced questions like is the DVT acute or chronic or is it causing complete obstruction versus partial, but I think those things are best reserved for formal studies. When you're talking about the other two principles, the, the main things to keep in mind is they're really going to focus on the excluding proximal DVT, uh, not necessarily distal DVT, and we're going to hone in on the, the, the hot spots, if you will, and we're going to focus on two regions rather than the entire um, proximal tree. So when you're compressing, um, what should happen with the probe is, is as you press down, the anterior and posterior wall of the vein will completely uh, collapse together and touch and you'll obliterate the lumen of the vein with just gentle pressure. If there's a clot there, um, you won't be able to compress the anterior and posterior walls together and it will be a non-compressible vein. Here you can see a vein and artery um, with compression. It goes, the vein is completely obliterated versus when you have compression here with a clot inside, you can't see the, um, or you can see the uh, anterior and posterior walls do not meet. So when we're talking about proximal lower extremity DVT versus lower, really what we mean is anything that's in the popliteal vein or more proximally. And this is important to know that the many radiology protocols only evaluate the product 
proximal DBT, and so um, emergency ultrasound protocols and other limited um, protocols uh, really focus on the proximal portion. If you're in the uh, vascular lab, however, they do full leg um, uh, DBT studies most of the time to include the calf. The reason they truncate the exam is because the it's much higher risk of embolization in the proximal portion compared to in the calf. In the proximal DVT, if you find one, it requires anticoagulation unless it's uh, contraindicated. Uh, and then with distal DVT, anticoagulation is actually optional um, and depends on multiple factors, which we'll just kind of glance through here, um, mainly um, if patients are um, very ill or have multiple significant comorbidities, extensive clot burden, or in an inpatient setting. So let's talk about the technique. Uh, we're going to focus on a two-zone technique. Um, we're going to focus on the region behind the knee uh, distally as well as the region in the inguinal uh, space here um, proximally. And we're going to have three different categories. One is going to be fully compressible uh, vein. Uh, the other is going to be a non-compressible vein. And that's going to be considered a positive study and suggestive of DVT when it's non-compressible. The third category to keep in mind is, is this non-diagnostic um, uh, category where you're having a um, either a poor image or you're just not sure what you're seeing. Have the courage if it's a non-diagnostic scan to say it's a non-diagnostic scan and don't just say oh, it was probably normal. Um, just a word about two-point versus two-region scan protocol. You'll hear two-point a lot, but I think what we really mean by two-point is uh, this two-zone technique. And so we'll have, rather than just compressing um, the common femoral vein just once at the groin and the popliteal just once at the um, you know, behind the knee. I think it's important to have multiple compressions, uh, two to three sites, um, starting at the sapho-femoral junction and going to where the superficial vein and deep fem femoral vein bifurcate, uh, and then jumping down to the popliteal space and compressing above the knee, at the knee, and then just below the knee where the uh, popliteal vein uh, branches. There's some debate on this, uh, and I think more to come on that, but uh, this is what we're going to teach for you for now. So the linear transducer is obviously going to be your preferred transducer uh, for uh, superficial structures. You can uh, use the curvilinear structure as well, but if you're having to use the curvilinear structure because the leg's that big, um, you might want to consider getting a formal study. The patient setup you want to keep in mind is going to have the patient in the supine position with the hip externally rotated and the knee flexed with the head of the bed uh, slightly raised to facilitate venous pooling. Now um, note that when you're in the inguinal region, note the position of the hand is very high up and the most common mistake beginners make is they try to start uh, too low on the leg. Um, if your hand is not in a region that makes you just slightly uncomfortable when you're first starting out, um, you're probably probably starting too low. When you move to the popliteal space, um, um, it's nice to have this uh, type of access, but you can also uh, have the patient dangle the leg on the uh, over the edge of the bed, the prone position, even the standing position, although I almost never do those. So how much pressure to compress? Um, the vein should come down uh, easily with uh, gentle pressure. Um, if you see the artery deform, uh, that's okay. But if you're seeing the artery uh, deform uh, to completely occlude the lumen and the vein is still not collapsed, that's a positive test. All right. And so depending on where you're compressing, tendons and muscles uh, around the vein might require more pressure. But if you use a hand, uh, as was shown in the other images, uh, on either on front of the knee in the popliteal space or behind the thigh and kind of push up to meet the probe in both um, circumstances, uh, you can use a lot less pressure. So starting off in the common femoral region, we're going to start at the junction of the saphenous and the common femoral vein in the transverse plane. Okay, So you're going to put the probe perpendicular to the vessel wall um, and, and try not to just wedge the probe into the folds and kind of hope for the best. Really sort of have somebody retract if needed um, and get up into that space. Hold the probe perpendicular and compress uh, completely to ensure the vein completely collapse at the junction of the saphenous. 
Then you're going to slide the probe down distally, compressing about every one centimeter or so, um, and stop once you've visualized the bifurcation into the deep femoral vein and superficial femoral, femoral vein. Um, once you've seen that both of them compress uh, distally, that's when you know you can stop in the femoral region and move on to the popliteal region. Um, and so this is what the inguinal ligament looks like when you're high up, and then you'll come further down. You'll see the common femoral artery and the common femoral vein here. You see the um, sometimes a valve in between the junction of the greater saphenous vein coming into the common femoral vein. Um, as you move a little bit more distally, the artery will bifurcate first into superficial and deep, um, and then you'll see the greater saphenous vein kind of moving more superficially away. Um, then the common femoral vein will then bifurcate into superficial and deep femoral uh, veins here. Um, you'll oftentimes see a little per perforating vein uh, either into the common femoral vein or the uh, superficial femoral vein in between the artery and you just make sure that compresses at that junction as well. So here's an example of normal compression. Um, note here you can see the, the depth is sufficient enough to see the uh, femoral head um, and uh, that's a good depth to help frame your image. You can see the junction of the saphenous and the common femoral veins completely compressing, whereas here you can see that with compression there's clot inside this lumen and it's not able to completely uh, collapse. And so if you look at this uh, scan here, this is showing why I think a two-zone technique is, is helpful. Here's a compression at the uh, junction of the saphenous uh, and showing complete compressibility but if you and you if you were to stop there you would think it was a negative scan but just distally where the artery is now bifurcated there's a, a, a con at the common femoral vein here in this perforator um, there's a big clot there so include the two region um, for the popliteal you're going to start at the popliteal uh, the top of the popliteal fossa and just sort of work your way down you're going to compress to make sure everything uh, all the deep veins um, compress um, and stop once the popliteal vein uh, trifurcates, um, usually um, before you actually start scanning into the calf. So here this technique is good, and this technique is also just fine, and you're just going to compress this entire region, one, two, three at least. The popliteal vein will be more superficial than the popliteal artery, and it's nice to have the depth enough to um, have the bone, either the distal femur or proximal tibia in view, just to make sure you're framing your image properly. And this is, shows a um, completely compressible popliteal vein on top of the popliteal artery, which you can see pulsating. Here's another example of a nice compressibility, whereas right here you have two arteries here and the vein is sandwiched in between and is not compressible. There's clot there. Here's clot right at the level of the uh, trifurcation. So with pearls and pitfalls, I think the important thing to be as familiar with the anatomy and know what you're expecting to see uh, and finding that corresponding artery and adjusting the depth to properly frame the image and make sure you slide your probe proximally and distally over the vessel instead of just at one point and that'll help you avoid pitfalls like Baker cysts and lymph nodes and mistaking superficial veins for deep veins. As far as literature is concerned, I think there's abundant publications showing the validity and accuracy of physician-performed bedside DVT and ultrasound exams. There is some publications that show a higher prevalence of isolated superficial femoral uh, DVT in ICU patients, um, but for outpatients, ED patients, a uh, limited ultrasound certainly seems reasonable. Uh, the most robust evidence comes from this JAMA article over 2,000 patients uh, showing no difference between those randomized to a whole leg ultrasound strategy versus a two-zone technique with D-dimer testing. The ACCP guidelines have incorporated uh, this kind of stuff into their um, um, uh, publications, as have the ACEP guidelines um, uh, showing um, how to use bedside ultrasound to your full advantage. So my conclu conclusions from the literature is that um, the prevalence of isolated uh, superficial femoral DVT and the clinical uh, and prognostic sim sig significance of distal DVT depends on the setting and the patient population, with those um, being more of a factor in inpatients and ICU patients. 
I think prior to replacing the whole leg strategy in that population, we really need to study it more extensively. Uh, but this is very useful in the outpatient setting, uh, as well as when combined with uh, heart and lung ultrasound in very sick uh, patients in emergencies. So that's it for now. Uh, if you have any uh, questions or comments, you can reach out to me on the uh, Sono Internist website or on Twitter at uh, Sono Internist. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon.